All right, I got another roundup of DC news for you all. And I think that's to be expected at least right now because Discovery is certainly trying to change things within Warner Brothers and DC. So there's gonna be a ton of turnover, a ton of announcements, and honestly, a bunch of reveals because they do have a couple of movies on the way. Now, the biggest topic I wanna talk about is in fact what the title of this video is. I'm gonna wait for that for the end. You know, save the best for last type of thing. The first thing I want to talk about, I've been seeing this flying all over social media, and I want to somewhat debunk this if other people haven't debunked it on their YouTube channels. I'm sure people have, but I'm going to do it anyways. This whole article of Ben Affleck apparently being offered $30 million to come back for the future of the DCEU Batman is not true. Now, if it is true, holy shit, that's crazy. But there is no proof to this statement and where this originally came from, I'm blanking on the website's name, but usually they just create clickbait articles that have absolutely no precedence. So this rumor is exactly that, it's a rumor, there's no truth to it. Why would they give $30 million to Ben Affleck to make him the highest paid DC actor in the DCEU when right now one of their employees is The Rock, the highest paid actor in Hollywood right now, and he's only getting $20 million. So the numbers don't really add up there and it wouldn't make too much sense. Because then if Ben Affleck's gonna be getting 30 million, I mean, yeah, it would be great to have him back, but then The Rock's just gonna be like, oh, uh, okay, so does that mean I'm gonna get 40 million? And I know there's an argument to be made there, like if you are playing Batman, you should already be getting paid more than everybody else because Batman is the top top dog, but it still just doesn't make sense. It's The Rock, you know, highest paid actor, so... Yeah. Now, does this mean that Ben Affleck will not be showing up as Batman ever again? No, I don't believe that to be the case. I just don't think Ben Affleck is going to be the main Batman in the DC Universe moving forward, and I think we all know this. I have heard a lot of rumors that the DCEU is moving forward to this final Crisis event. A huge event will happen, the way it does in the actual Final Crisis comic books, and then by the end of the movie or the movie series, whatever it might be, there's only one specific person for each character, and then they finally move on with a true DC cinematic universe. That is a rumor as well, though, but there have been quite a lot of people who have talked about the potential of a Final Crisis event. I could see Ben Affleck returning in some aspect in those movies or maybe any other type of film or scenario that does revolve around a final crisis or the multiverse or something would it be awesome to have ben affleck come back as a batman full-time yeah it would be great it would have been awesome if warner brothers never tampered with those visions and never ruined all these potential possibilities with ben affleck's batman henry cavill's superman that is ancient history now and regardless this article is just not true. Okay, topic number two. The Flash suit and the Supergirl suit were revealed at a Warner Brothers Expo. Looking at these suits, when I first saw the Supergirl suit, the behind the scenes set of Sasha Kale, it looked pretty good. The more I look at it here and some of the closer up photos I get of it, I'm not loving it anymore. I don't like how the top of the suit, the S, is blending into the red. It almost kind of looks like you can't see the top of the S. I just, I'm not feeling it anymore. Then again, maybe I will have the same feeling about it when seeing it on screen because I liked it when she was in it. I don't like it when she's not in it now. Like it just looks weird. So maybe that'll be different for me. Now the flash suit, I don't like this suit at all. I'm seeing some of the close ups on it and I'm not liking that handcrafted design. I don't even really know what the hell it is. When I compare this suit 
to Zack Snyder's Justice League suit. The Zack Snyder Justice League suit blows this suit out of the water. This one looks like a plastic flash toy that you would get from a knockoff toy company. I don't like it. And I actually feel like this will look worse in action. So, yeah. Now, carrying along the same line of costumes, there has been a reveal for the Blue Beetle costume. Now, I did not know how to feel about this movie when they announced it about last year. I just kind of felt like it was a film we don't need. I don't want to necessarily say I still don't feel that way. It is a little weird that we're getting a Blue Beetle movie and we just seemingly can't get a Superman 2. But regardless, the suit looks awesome. I gotta say, they did a damn good job with this suit. It looks exactly like the comic books. It even looks like Blue Beetle from the Injustice video game. The design on it looks exactly the way I would picture a Blue Beetle. The thing about costumes is if you're making these superhero movies, you're already being given millions of dollars to work on these products. Why is it that sometimes these production companies make lack luster costume designs. This does not look lackluster to me. This looks really, really accurate. Some of the best parts of your superhero films come from the design of your main character. They're not disappointing with these two pictures I'm seeing. Also too, there have been people who have been filming the set of where they're at right now. There's a particular scene of Blue Beetle in a car and he's hopping out of it. And based off of him moving around in the suit, it looks pretty good. It looks convincing. So bravo to that them in that department. All right, this is the biggest one I wanted to talk about. And of course, it's about J.J. Abrams. First of all, I think we need to applaud David Zaslav right now for really putting a lot of the projects that Warner Brothers and DC has on the go right now under a microscope. And he's really looking at these production companies and all the assets they have going on and moving through this company. And he's questioning whether or not it's viable, whether or not this is gonna make money, whether or not it's a smart decision. This is why the guy can the Wonder Twins so easily. This guy is trying to cut costs on projects that don't need to be made so they can save up that money and put it towards films or shows or content that actually matters. So apparently J.J. Abrams is under a little bit of heat right now because if you all remember in 2019, just around the release of The Rise of Skywalker, he was was given a $250 million deal to make a bunch of Warner Brothers films, to make a bunch of DC content, and what has he done since 2019? Nothing. It even says right here, sources say Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Soslov is frustrated by the lack of output from Bad Robot's $250 million overall deal. Well, wouldn't you? It's been three years. You signed a $250 million deal, a quarter of a billion dollars, and yet this guy has done nothing. Maybe this is a personally biased opinion that I have on J.J. Abrams, but there's a lot about Abrams that I just wouldn't trust after the release of Rise of Skywalker. And no, it's actually not because of how bad the Rise of Skywalker was. Because without the monstrosity of The Last Jedi, you would never have the monstrosity of The Rise of Skywalker. But it's actually The Force Awakens that has made me lose confidence in J.J. Abrams. And the reason for that is he was lazy enough that he was given the property of Star Wars, he was given the opportunity to make the next episode in the Skywalker saga, and he completely rips off A New Hope and really does not do anything new 
or special with it. And number two, just knowing how he feels about episodes one, two, and three, he openly hates one, two, and three. So when you get a guy like him to lead the future of seven, eight, nine, that's already not a good start, my guy. That brings it over to DC. How much trust do I have in him to handle some of these DC characters? There might be certain things he does not like about these characters, and he's like, oh, screw that, strip this, strip that, let's not even put that in it. You don't know what he's gonna do, and that's honestly a scary part, especially if he makes a movie or a show about a character that we all love like Superman. And that is a project I really hope he doesn't get to make. I'm not going to be reading the article. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. But it does mention here, Abrams has multiple projects in the works under the company-wide deal, joining an adult animated Batman series that reunites Abrams with his Felicity collaborator and friend Matt Reeves, who is behind the Batman feature film. I'm 50-50 on this. I know we're getting two Batman animated shows and one is from Bruce Tim, which thank God that's awesome. I can't wait for that. And the other is from Abrams and Reeves. Now Reeves I trust because he's gained my trust from this Batman film. Abrams, I, I, don't, I don't know, dude. I, mm, I'm teetering here. It's 50-50. You're working with someone I trust, but then there's also you. That paragraph goes on to say how many other projects he's got planned for HBO Max, but then it also says at the bottom of that paragraph, the company Abrams runs with his partner and wife, Katie McGrath, is also behind HBO Max's DC Comics-based Justice League Dark franchise, which features shows including Constantine and Madam X. Sources say the DC Comics properties have also come under the spotlight. Sources suggest there is some frustration within the halls of Warner Brothers Discovery that Abrams has laid claim to a number of DC characters but has yet to get anything on the air. Sources note Warner Brothers has seen scripts for Constantine and the pilot of Madam X. Do not be surprised if either of those projects don't end up happening. I mean, we already had a Constantine show and it got canceled. I won't be surprised if Warner Brothers Discovery just says, you know what? Why are we trying with Constantine again so soon after its first show's cancellation? Scrap this idea. And then like, Madam X, bro. Madam Xanadu? Come on, man. Yeah, Madam Xanadu is an interesting character when she's supporting, but her own show? JJ, my guy, what's going on up here? You could honestly make a Spectre show and have Madam Xanadu be a supporting character to the show. Sometimes people have ideas that don't need to be made and should just simply be kept as an idea. I know there's a joke on the internet about fans having crazy ideas and crazy speculations, and there's always this response of keyboard warriors, thank god fans don't write stories. Honestly, sometimes I think fan stories are better than the garbage we get. It's better than the people who are so high up in these industries making shows like Madam Xanadu, bro. No one is asking for this. No one wants this. I guarantee you a fan could make a Spectre show better than J.J. Abrams' pilot for Madam Xanadu. I don't even care if Madam Xanadu ends up being really good if it gets greenlit, that doesn't matter to me. Let's look at the catalog of DC characters. Justice League Dark itself has characters much more popular than Madame Xanadu. Constantine, I understand, even though I still don't think it'll happen, but Madame Xanadu does not need her own show. So there's a lot going on with J.J. Abrams and his company Bad Robot right now. I'm sure we're gonna be hearing a lot more news, maybe certain things about how certain projects are getting canned and certain projects will get greenlit. I know we don't have too much information on the relationship between the two companies right now, but I would not be surprised 
if Warner Brothers Discovery found a way to back out of this deal because J.J. Abrams has done nothing to show for it. He's done nothing to get these projects on the way. He's apparently had this Superman idea since 2019-2020 and we've still seen absolutely nothing of it. Apparently there's a writer on the project. Maybe it's just a movie that shouldn't happen like most DC movies right now. A lot of them need to be cancelled, redrafted, maybe even rewritten, and just brought in another direction. And thank you to David Zaslov for going out here and making differences and putting pressure on these people who are making really stupid movie, TV show, and content decisions. But that's all the information I have as of right now. Let me know in the comments below what you think of some of these things I talked about, especially the J.J. Abrams situation. Let me know if you want to see some of his projects or if you think that it's just a good idea to maybe get him out of Warner Brothers and maybe to not touch any of the DC properties. If there is any more really big news surrounding this, I'm sure I will make a video, so keep an eye out for that. And until next time, everyone, I will talk to you all very soon.